How does your brain work? We do know a lot about brains, and by expanding on what we do know, we can deduce even more. Of course, we don't have the complete picture, but this video covers a few actions which are key components of thinking, described in terms of how they are similar or dissimilar to the way a computer works with today's AI algorithms. In a computer, the simplest thing is a bit. A bit can be a single transistor, and it has one of two states. It is either on or off, although it could have many states. In the brain, the equivalent building block is the neuron. In the simplest possible model of a neuron, it also has just two states. It is either firing or it's not. Later on, we'll extend this model to be more complex, but for the moment, we can refer to the neuron as a bit as well. If you look at an individual bit within either a computer or a brain, it has no meaning. Bits only have meaning in the context of other bits. In the computer, our bit of interest might be part of a character code in some text, or part of a binary number, or an image pixel. In your brain, a neuron might also represent an image pixel, but it is inconceivable that neurons represent bits in character codes or binary numbers. If individual bits only have meaning within the context of relationships with other bits, how do we know the relationship? In the computer, we derive the relationship because bits have addresses. Addresses give bits a sequence, so we can say that bits are in a certain order, or two bits are adjacent, or are eight bits apart, for example. Because of this sequence, given the address, we can look at other related bits, like a file name, and find a program which will properly interpret our bit to reconstruct an image, show the text, or add a number, for example. In the brain, there are no addresses. The relationship between any bit and others is defined by physical connections through axons to other bits via synapses. A neuron might not be connected at all to the neurons which are physically closest to it. In fact, in the neocortex, the thinking part of our brains, neurons can be connected to relatively distant neurons. Neuron cell bodies are on the surface of the brain, and the interior is a mass of interconnecting axons. In this image, you can see that the amount of interconnection is very large relative to the neuron cell bodies on the surface. In a computer, we can retrieve data from memory because we have the address. Without an address, how can we locate information within the brain? In this video, I'll demonstrate two methods, by content and by relationship. Your memory includes phrases of speech. If you hear, Mary had a your brain will find the match and fill in the rest of the phrase. It may also find alternative matches of lower probability. Google is already really good at this, much better than your brain. This function also works with images. In this image, your mind sees a yellow square. In this other image, you also see a square because that is the closest match based on the information given. Even though the image is of four disks with pieces missing, and no square actually exists in the image. Your brain is given a partial input and can return the complete information. This functionality could be implemented on a computer with a neural network. On the other hand, a Google-like completion system could be implemented more efficiently with an indexed search. Now, let's consider relationships. When you see an object, you can see its many attributes, for example, color or shape. Considering the yellow square, there might be separate neurons in your brain which represent abstract concepts of yellow and square, which would both fire. All yellow objects you know about are connected to the yellow neuron, and all square ones are connected to the square neuron. Multiple connections can make these relationships two-way, so if your yellow neuron fires, it can bring to mind different yellow objects, or fire the square neuron and recall square objects. We can expect the abstract yellow neuron to be connected to a neuron representing the word yellow. If you are multilingual, you might have multiple word neurons relating to the abstract yellow neuron to represent different words in different languages. Each word neuron could be connected to a series of neurons connected to individual letters so you could remember how to spell yellow. In order to speak the word, you need different information. The sounds or phonemes needed to pronounce the word. 
Each of these neurons, for an individual phoneme, might in turn be connected to the muscles you need to use to actually speak the word. Working the other direction, if you hear yellow spoken, the word yellow and abstract yellow neurons would fire. Likewise, because you know the spelling and can recognize letters, you could also read the word yellow. Either way, when the abstract yellow neuron fires, yellow things spring to mind. With all this connection, just relating to the concept of yellow, you can imagine the vast interconnection representing the knowledge in your brain. The interconnection is similar to AI software representing a semantic network, or a knowledge base. An important distinction is that in a computerized knowledge base, nodes are typically given meaning, where in this explanation they are just abstract bits in the brain. Considering just these two brain functions, one can easily imagine that as you go through the world, part of your brain is continuously doing its best to recognize sights and sounds, and continuously relating things you see and hear to things you already know. This video has been limited to knowledge your brain already contains, and a binary model. In future videos, I'll consider more complex models and the more difficult problem of storing new information in your brain's memory. For more on this timely topic, read my new book, Will Computers Revolt? Preparing for the Future of Artificial Intelligence. Available now at Amazon and book retailers worldwide in paperback, hardcover, and ebook editions.